Hi, I'm Arthur Haynes, and I'm here today in the foothills of the western mountains of Maine to share with you the protective benefits of white pine. In this case, I'll be speaking about eastern white pine, or Pinostrobus, our state tree here in Maine. But any species of pine can be used to convey amazing protective benefits against radiation, in particular radioactive particles such as those that have been released from the recent Fukushima event. I'm here looking at the plant in early June, and you'll notice that the tips of the branches are these bright green structures, which are the expanding leaves. And just below the leaves are clusters of yellow egg-shaped structures, and these are the pollen cones. The pollen cones are perfect for gathering just prior to their release of pollen. It's just far more efficient to gather the whole pollen cone than to try to gather small amounts of pollen. Now, I've used these as a source of nutrition. In fact, these can certainly be considered a superfood. They're extremely high in a suite of vitamins, including provitamin A, several B-complex vitamins, C, D, and E. As well, they contain a host of minerals, and they're also really endowed with amino acids. However, recently I've come to realize how important this food can be in conveying protective benefits against radioactive particles. Now, ongoing sampling here in the United States has shown that rainwater is contaminated with radioactive cesium as far east as the Great Lakes states. Of much more concern to me because of where I live and where my food sources uh, are located is the fact dairy in the Montpelier, Vermont area has now been shown to also contain radioactive cesium. The issue with dairy, of course, is that it bioaccumulates these toxins and gives people a much higher dose than they would otherwise receive simply living in those areas. Remember, radioactive particles, there's no safe dose. And what I'm getting at is we can't see, we can't smell, we can't feel these particles, but in no way do they contribute to our health. They all increase or elevate our risk of cancer. Only by being proactive and using foods like I'll be describing here of white pine can we take steps to protect ourselves and our family and not rely on the reports that are given to us from various governmental officials who may or may not be trying to protect their best interests. Now when I gather foods like this that are very small and require this kind of manual dexterity, I like to have both hands free. And to do that, I need a container to put these in that's convenient. So I use a blicky. This particular blicky is made actually from the bark of the eastern white pine with a reverse wrapped cord that you can see that suspends it from my neck. If you don't have access to these kinds of material, this is very easy to make from a can or a plastic container that you can tie about your waist. Now, as you look at these young branchlets, you can see again that the young leaves sit at the top and the pollen cones sit at the base of the branchlet. So when I remove this, I can use one hand to hold and the other hand to strip those off and deposit them in my container. I like to do this just a day or two before the pollen cones shed. The reason is it's quite tasty, it's not very resiny, and also, I don't have to try to collect the pollen in a bag, which is really inefficient, and it's hard to time it so that you can gather large amounts of pollen because all of the pollen cones open at different times. So you're only gathering just a little bit of pollen at any one time with that method. So this is much more efficient. I do have to remember that I'm breaking off the growth of that season for that particular branch, and so I need to spread my impact out, taking a little from here and a little from there so that I don't hinder the growth on one part of the plant too much. Now there are definitely some strategies that you'll need to employ in order to gather enough of the pollen cones to use as a food or to make a medicinal tincture. One of the problems that you run into is if you're in a shaded environment such as a forest, the trees have to grow for light. What that means is all the branches are up high, far out of reach, and that's also where the pollen cones are produced. So you need to find open-grown trees where the lower branches can reach light. That means out in the middle of fields. It's also a really good time to be out in the open because there's less biting insects. Right now, in June, in Maine, it's not always a fun time being in the forest, but out here in the open I get some break from the mosquitoes, black flies, and other things that like to take blood from me. 
but also you'll still run into branches that are far out of reach. And that's why I recommend using a berry hook. This is simply the stem of a young sapling I took with a branch at one end that can be used as a hook and a cord that I've drilled a hole to put in at the bottom. This way I can pull the branch down, step in the cord, and still have both of the hands free. So it kind of works like this. Pull the branch down, step through the cord, and it holds it in place for you so that you're still able to do your collecting nice and efficiently. Now what's really special about the white pine is the volume of pollen it produces. Many people this time of year are not excited by the pollen because it coats their windows, their cars, and it coats everything with a yellow dust that they feel like they have to clean up. And this is an absolute gift. It just isn't being recognized by the modern people. Because the pollen is produced so abundantly from these pollen cones, it's really easy to gather it in great abundance without necessarily taking too much from the tree. A conscientious collector can do a great job of minimizing their damage. And now to the details. How is it that white pine is able to confer these protective advantages against radioactive particles? Well, it does this through a number of mechanisms, which is why it's so absolutely valuable for this particular type of environmental toxin. First and foremost, it does this through the nutrition it provides. Pine pollen, which is what is contained within those pollen cones, is truly a superfood because it is so endowed with vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. It gives our immune system the fuel it needs to keep us protected. Our immune system can only work at the efficiency of the nutrition we provide it. Bad nutrition equals a poorly performing uh, immune system. And so because of what this is capable of giving us in terms of nutrition, we start off against radioactive particles with having a powerful immune system. Second thing that it does is it provides us with non-enzymatic antioxidants. These are the types of antioxidants that we get from our diet. And these include many of the well-known polyphenols that we get from plants like resveratrol, as well as the vitamin antioxidants. In this case, provitamin A or the carotenoids, which have high antioxidant power, as well as the vitamins C, D, and E, all contained in the pine pollen, are provided to us by consuming this food. These non-enzymatic antioxidants function by stopping the chain reaction that occurs once a free radical has taken electrons away from an otherwise stable molecule. Now that molecule has to take electrons away from another molecule to become stable again and this chain reaction continues. The types of non-enzymatic non antioxidants that I'm talking about are able to stabilize these molecules by donating electrons without they themselves becoming free radicals. A third way that white pine helps us is that it boosts our levels of an enzymatic antioxidant. Now, enzymatic antioxidants um, include some of the endogenous antioxidants, those things that we make inside our body. The best example and relevant here with the discussion of white pine is superoxide dismutase. This particular endogenous antioxidant has been clinically shown to have protective benefits against radioactive particles. And as an enzymatic antioxidant, it essentially destroys or deactivates the free radical before it initiates the chain reaction. So what's super important in this case that you understand is that pine pollen essentially helps us get both types of antioxidants. We get those that interrupt the chain reaction and those that quench the free radicals before they ever get started. There are not many types of foods or wild plants that I can share with you that are capable of bolstering both types of antioxidants in our body. It's one of the reasons that pines are so absolutely special in how they protect us uh, from a host of things that would seek to damage our cells and our DNA.
And finally, in this particular case, there is yet one last mechanism by which white pine protects us. When we look at the specific particle that has been released from Fukushima that we're finding here on our continent in North America, it is radioactive cesium. Now, much like heavy metals can replace other crucial minerals in our body at important enzyme binding sites and create health problems, cesium replaces potassium in our body. So any place where we are deficient in potassium, cesium can bind and then it can interrupt important cellular activities. So it's really important that we keep this in mind and be sure that we're doing the research necessary to get high potassium content foods in our diet. And in this case, the highest mineral that has been determined from assays of pine pollen is in fact potassium, meaning that we will have an abundance of potassium if we're consuming this on a regular basis. And in doing so, we make sure that those enzyme binding sites are saturated with potassium so that cesium has no place to bind, and in which case our detoxification strategies, we can use those to remove cesium from our body. Now once I've gathered the pollen cones, I like to bring them back place them in a glass container and set it in the freezer. The freezing helps to rupture or break the cell wall so that we can much more easily absorb the constituents that are in the pine pollen. Commercially, uh, some manufacturers actually gather the pollen and then shoot it against a hard surface to also facilitate rupturing those cells. For us, the freezing serves as kind of a low-cost, low-tech version of doing the same thing. After I take it out of the freezer, I then put it in a mortar and pestle and grind this up a bit prior to either consuming or uh, soaking it in an organic alcohol so that I can make a tincture. The tincture is nice because it serves as a solvent to extract the constituents as well as uh, it makes it uh, a preservative so that I don't have to keep it refrigerated. Know that there's no literature that says that rupturing the cell walls makes it better or more easily absorbable. This is sort of a theory. And given that pine pollen has been consumed in traditional medicine in Eastern countries for a very long time without any of these methods, I want you to be aware that you can simply eat the pollen cones as they are, keep them in the refrigerator or the freezer where they'll keep for a long time, and you can simply enjoy those protective and nutrition benefits that we spoke about when we were in the field. Now, if you are in an area where you don't have access to pine pollen, there are other options. For example, you can purchase pine pollen products. And though there are undoubtedly many reputable companies to purchase from, I'd certainly recommend Surthrival because I'm aware of the care that goes into the sourcing and the manufacturing of the products. And you can go to Surthrival.com to look at the products that they have there, including pine pollen tinctures. If you don't want to purchase but you're still very much interested in wild versions that you can collect of foods and plants that will help protect you from radioactive particles, well then I suggest that you either go to my website or you go to the website of the main Primitive Skills School www.primitiveskills.com where you can get a schedule of classes and there you can come to some of the healing with plants classes where you can find out alternatives replacements for pine pollen that can be gathered from around here on the landscape that serve many of the same if not the exact same functions as pine pollen and uh, I hope to see you there